Hey everyone, welcome back to Shop Life. The time has finally come. We are officially packed completely. Only thing we have left is one little laptop bag, that's it. And we're about to hit the road. But the other guys have actually already started moving in. So there's a lot of their stuff here. Now here's the funny thing. So like I said before, the guy, that, the guy and uh, his partner that are taking over, the guy was actually my first customer when I moved out here. And he also owns the 6 Series right there, which we worked on as well, which is on the vlog channel. And it's back here again. It's almost done being restored. But yeah, they've already moved in a lot of their stuff. It doesn't look like we've left because they also like BMWs. They have a lot of BMW parts as well. But we're officially done. Oh my god. It's getting kind of sad, but oh man. Yeah. Uh, All right, come on, Fluffy. Let's go outside. Time to turn off the lights for last time. Come on, let's go. And here's our new doggy. This is Callie. Named her after California. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, oh man. I'm gonna show them outside. Mm -hmm. Here's the box truck. And then here's the trailer attached to it. All ready to go. Oh, it's sad. And we're almost a day and a half later than what we expected to leave. Cause we literally just finished packing. And then here's the truck. It's also packed inside and out. Packed to the max. But yeah, let's hit the road. Yep. So she's gonna be driving this one. I'm gonna be driving that one. We'll see how everything goes. I mean, it's, it's overloaded to say the least. I mean, the box truck is completely packed. Uh, it's actually leaning a little bit on one side, but it'll be all right. The trailer, I think that's just at its, almost at its maximum capacity. And I already hooked up the trailer brake controller, all that, we'll see how everything goes. We'll get some footage while we're on the road. She'll be following me the whole time. Right? You don't have a choice. They're gonna be going like 30 miles an hour. Oh man. All right, before we even start the trip, let's go in and address a few things before everybody starts going crazy in the comments. First things first, why did we put the trailer on the box truck when I already know that the box truck is overloaded? So the main reason we did that was the trailer is really heavy as well and the box truck pretty heavy as well. If something were to happen, I would rather happen to it on the box truck since I'm gonna be driving it. I do have the trailer brake controller wired in onto the box truck since the trailer has electric brakes. And we weren't expecting the box truck to go over like 50 anyways. So I mean, we're gonna be going at a very slow speed and I'm gonna be keeping a lot of distance because obviously we're in that big old thing overloaded. So I didn't want Selena to have to drive the trailer and if we were to stop anywhere like in the evening and if we wanted to go somewhere, even like, you know, get food, it would be a lot easier to just go in the F-150 without anything else attached to it rather than having to take the box truck or having to take the F-150 and the trailer. So that pretty much explains why we have the setup the way we have. And for the most part, it worked out. Oh, people are gonna ask why I didn't drive the box truck. Shit, you're driving that big old thing. <laughs> well, I mean, let's put it this way. This is the first time she's actually driving the F-150 at a long distance as well. So I mean, we don't wanna overwhelm her and she's gonna be following me. I didn't wanna follow her just cause like, you know, <laughs> Yeah, you guys get it. It was just a lot better of a situation for me to have all of the things that could potentially go wrong, have it on my vehicle that I was driving, rather than have to, having to worry about what's gonna happen to her if something were to go wrong. Foreshadowing. Oh, so you were risking your life for me? I was risking it all for you. <laughs> all right, but yeah. So day one and day two were fine. We were driving. No so day one, we didn't even drive that much. We wanted to do like, you know, a test run. So I think we got to like somewhere in Arizona close to Phoenix and we spent the night there. And then day two, we drove all day. Going at or below the speed limit, you don't really cover much ground. Our usual time limit for the trips is usually 48 hours. We're usually there, including our stop in the night. So this time it took a lot longer than that. But the first two days, uneventful. That's why we didn't record too much. However, on the third day, <laughs> this happened. So we are on the side of the road. I saw some like rubber little pieces flying at me. So I told him to pull over and it turns out that it looks like 
the two tires are over here. Seem like they're about to blow. So, good thing I was behind him and I told him on time because that would have been bad. So right now he's trying to figure out what we're going to do basically because we're in the middle of nowhere. There's nothing, nothing here. I'm not sure how close the nearest city is, but yeah. Oh my gosh. And how, I, I don't even know how he's gonna jack up that box truck. Oh my gosh. This is not good. I will update you guys um, when we know what to do. So he just came and I didn't record him because he's all stressed and stuff. But he said, I told him the only way, he can't take the tires off here if he wants to take them to Walmart, which is 18 miles away. Like right here is too dangerous. So I said that road right there, if he can somehow go over there. But as you can see right there, it dips down. And he thinks the trailer's gonna get stuck. But over there, it looks kind of like a little bit better. So that's what he's gonna try to do. And oh my gosh. So let's see. Oh my god. Yeah? Okay. What are you trying to do? Trying to figure out a flat spot where I can go. These are not flat enough. What if you go like at a super angle? like at an angle. Yeah. That sucks at all. The, oh my god. Oh shit, it's gonna flip. Check the air pressures and everything like yeah. an hour. That's not it hasn't yeah. been an hour. We just left. The inside tire, which is brand new, popped. You need more wood than that. I'm just taking some weight off. Okay. Took off some weight? Yeah. While we were doing all of the mechanical work on the box truck before we started packing, I had made sure that all of the tires were replaced. So pretty much all the tires are brand new on the box truck. And we just wanted to do that just to be safe. You know, we don't want any issues in the future while we were driving. But somehow during the trip, even though we had everything strapped down inside the box truck, the weight has started shifting even more onto the side, onto the side that was leaning. And I think my theory as to what happened as far as the tires blowing out was because of that weight shifting onto that one side, 
the two tires, since it is a dually on that side, start rubbing each other. And I mean, even if it rubs, it's not that big of a deal. The only thing is because of that rubbing, the heat can't dissipate as fast as it would if there was a little gap for the air to pass through. So the tires just got really hot. We were in Texas and it was actually a pretty warm day as well. And just because of that heat, the inside tire popped. So even though we had our whole shop in the box truck and most of my tools in the F-150, we still didn't have the right tools to change a tire uh, for the box truck mainly. And main reason is, I mean, we weren't expecting to change the tire in the box truck because they were all new. So the main thing I really needed was a bottle jack, like a, at least like a 12 ton bottle jack so I can lift the frame of the box truck and let the wheels come off the ground so I can take it out. But only thing I had was a couple of floor jacks and some jack stands. So I did, I made do with what I had just to get the wheels and tires off because we did have to make it to Walmart before it closed so that we can get the tires replaced. Otherwise, we'd be stuck for the night. And I know a lot of people would be like, don't you have AAA? And we do have AAA. But what, I mean, that really wouldn't have helped much because by the time they got there, Walmart probably would have closed. And on top of that, we didn't have a spare wheel ready to go on to the box truck. So regardless, only thing they would have been able to help us with is to jack it up. So we got it, we got it done regardless. And on the way back, once I got the tires replaced, I picked up a bottle jack from Walmart. Honestly, I still don't know how he did it. I was l literally about to give up. I'm like, just call somebody, like, yeah. because, yeah, it was scary. But, well, I mean, if you're gonna stress about it, you're gonna never think of a clever idea on how to get it out. But, but what, saw, what gave you the confidence to think that you could do it? Here's the thing, ever since I was a little kid, everybody has always told me my main weakness is I'm overconfident. And for me, that's always been my strength because if you're overconfident, as long as you're not cocky about it, you're gonna be fine. And for me, it always works out because even if I can't do it, I know I'll be able to figure out a way to do it. And that's exactly what we did here. Wow. Wow. Come on. So he went to go get the tires changed at Walmart and um, I stayed back in the box truck with Fluffy and Callie. So yeah, he told me to go with him, but I said no, I will stay back here with the box truck to take care of it just in case, you, you never know. But I'm not gonna lie, I am kind of scared because we're in the middle of nowhere and you don't know who can go through this road. So this road is, he said it was like a business road. Like this used to be the old highway and then now that's the new highway. And they are chilling. She's cleaning herself. Uh, so she's a Shiba Inu and they're known to like clean themselves often. They're very cat-like where they groom themselves and all that. Um, so she's cleaning her paws right now. And then Fluffy, on the other hand, he's just wondering what's going on since he's like a little older he kind of like senses what i am feeling um so he kind of i don't know it's hard to explain but i feel like a lot of people who have dogs kind of know like you know when they're acting a little off it's okay though right and she's a puppy she doesn't know what's going on <laughs> she's just very comfortable but as you can see the sun is setting really really fast right now it's 5 55 and the walmart that he's going to is closing at 7 so hopefully he makes it there on time and they take him in if not he has to find another solution Ooh, another solution i'll update you guys uh later and yeah all right, so it's a little while later. It's actually seven, seven, nine right now. Um, it's been a little over an hour. And look how dark it is out here. It's 
crazy. So, yeah, you can't see me, but he said that the wheels are getting the tires put on right now. So it should be another 30 minutes to come back all the way over here and then probably another hour to put it on and then we can leave. So yeah, we're going to use the headlights from the truck to give us some light so that we can change the tire and then we can be ready to go. But yeah, that's my little update. Um, I'll let you know once he's back and we can start putting on the new tire or wheel. <laughs> All right, he's back with the wheels now. Like two hours. Yeah, you had like an hour and something wait, so I'm just glad they got it done. Okay, but now, now the next thing that we had to figure out was because of this weight that was shifting in the box truck. We didn't want the new the two tires that we just replaced to pop again because we still had like almost 18 hours left to go. So the next day, since it was already nighttime, we decided to actually donate a bunch of stuff out from inside the box truck. So we stopped at a habitat. We had a couple of building materials that we had in the box truck and a few other things that were just, you know, had a lot of weight on that side. So we literally had to take out about half the box truck, unstrap everything that we had so like carefully strapped together but we finally got all that out. We wasted a few hours on that as well. But it w probably was the main reason we were able to make it back to North Carolina without the other two tires popping again. Okay, right, we're at the store. We just took everything out. I didn't vlog it obviously because it was a hassle to get it off. But they're out. As you can see, he's filling it in with some other stuff. So all this doesn't move over and yeah so Whew. let's see if it makes a difference though what a pain in the butt <laughs> so freaking louisiana it wouldn't be a cross-country trip for us if i didn't get pulled over we've done about like 20 something cross-country trips since we moved to california three years ago we've literally done about yeah i think about 20 or 25 driving cross-country trips and almost 75 percent of them i've got pulled over uh, I haven't got that many tickets. You guys saw my first ticket, which was in Selena's LS3 Swap E46. But we still got pulled over in the box truck, out of all things. And it wasn't for speeding. It wasn't for like doing anything stupid. It was just because they thought we had a commercial box truck, when in reality, it was just our personal moving vehicle. So I did get pulled over in Louisiana. The cop, however, was really, really nice. He didn't like, he just, you know, looked at all the paperwork and stuff. Callie was right beside me. She was just nice and calm, didn't do anything. And the cop just talked to us about, or talked to me about how, like where we're going and just our life story pretty much. And besides that, he let us go. We're finally here, unloading the wagon so we can drive it to our parents' house. It's like 30 minutes away. But yeah, we're trying to get it done before traffic hour. There are so many leaves everywhere. <laughs> Yep, they're having fun. Callie blends in. Right, Callie? Where's Fluffy? Fluffy! Hi! They're so happy. Look at them. Oh. We have arrived. Now we're taking off the trailer so we can unload the box truck. Oh, man. Yep. We're just gonna unload everything into the shop for now. And yeah. We have junk everywhere else. We're still renovating the apartment that we're gonna be staying at, which is on top of the shop. So we wanna get that done first before we start organizing all of this. And we're taking out all the stuff out of here because we have stuff that we need to use in the apartment. And then we also wanna up, like load up all the trash in here, like the carpet and all of that, so we can go mm -hmm. take it out. Yeah. All right, let's see what broke. <laughs> let's see how much stuff falls out. Whoa! Oh, you got them? Yeah, this one won't stand. And here's all the stuff. 
Ooh, something spilled. Oil. Oil spilled. All right, let's take this all out. So the very next day of once we got to the Carolinas, we decided to unpack the whole box truck. That way we can use the box truck for all of our other property renovations. So the move is finally done, and I hope you guys really enjoyed that whole series. That whole chapter of our lives is finally finished, and now we're gonna move on to better things, hopefully. And we already started doing all the renovations on the property. Those videos will be up shortly. If you guys want car content specifically, make sure you go check out my main channel, Shop Life TV. We're only gonna be uploading most of our personal lives and all of our property renovation DIY that we're gonna be doing on this vlog channel. So thank you guys for watching. We, we really do appreciate all the support and we'll see you guys in our next video.